Good morning. I'd like to convey to all, all of you, my best compliments as Minister of Education of Brazil to tell you that it's a great moment for our country to host this meeting convened by the Brazilian Academy of Sciences that will discuss, that, is, that has been discussing since yesterday and that will still discuss the whole day today, the, the ways we can take in order to improve uh, academic quality and inclusion. I will talk about social inclusion and uh, academic quality as is in the program. I apologize for not being able to be with you physically since the requirements of my post have uh, made that I stay in Brasilia for the whole day. But I'd like to, to begin my comment with a quote from Saint-Exupéry, the great French author that most people know from his book Le Petit Prince. M many of us must have read it when we were children and uh, a lot of lessons may have been drawn from, from this beautiful book. But I will consider another book, Terre des Hommes, that he published in 1939, so on the eve of the Second World War, and that ends by an experience that he had some years before, in the mid-30s, when he was traveling in a train that brought many, uh, French, uh, many Polish workers uh, from France to Poland. They had lost their jobs. They were coming home. Uh, this was a third-class train, so the circumstances were very difficult for everybody. And then he saw a small boy, and the boy was beautiful. And the boy, boy was sleeping on the nap of his mother with his father uh, at her side, and he was ex fascinated by, by this child. And then he began to think, this can be Mozart. This could be Mozart. This could be the, the great uh, Austrian composer or some other genius of our history. The beauty uh, of this, this small boy or the possibilities he could carry inside him. But he went on and he thought, but this is Mozart assassiné. This passage is quite well known. Uh, by this title, Mozart Assassiné, Murdered Mozart. The, the, all the possibilities this boy could give to the world, all the possibilities he could himself develop were being murdered by the circumstances uh, uh, that afflicted him. This is the last, these are the last pages of the book. The book ends with this sad memory, the sad idea that a lot of possibilities are destroyed in the world due to poverty, due to war, due to destruction. This is the point where we must begin to from to discuss uh, our question. What is the meaning of social inclusion with the academic quality when we have a, a country that has murdered so many Mozart, so many Mozarts in the last centuries? Everybody knows in Brazil but I think most of our foreign guests don't know, education took a very long time to develop in Brazil. In uh, fellow countries of Latin America, the first university was created by the Spaniards in the mid-1530s, uh, 500 years ago. In Brazil, the first university we had has been created in the 1920s, so uh, less than 100 years ago. Uh, on the other side, we had uh, an emperor, Dom Pedro II, that ruled from, uh, for almost 50 years in the 19th century. That was a very cultivated man, almost uh, a scholar, uh, that liked education but did almost nothing in order to provide Brazil with a, an educational system. Education took a very long time to develop in the country, either as basic, basic education as, uh, or as higher education. So, for instance, in 1968, when I began my higher education studies, we had only 100,000 uh, university students in the whole country of Brazil, 100,000, less than 50 years ago. In 2003, when President Lula uh, was inaugurated, we had less than 4 million university students in Brazil. It was 3.9 to be precise. Now we have 
7.3 million students in Brazilian universities. It means in the last 12 years we were able to raise the number of university students in Brazil by say 90 percent. It was a huge endeavor and it was linked to a series of measures that tried to include many people that had been socially excluded for a very long time in the country. Mostly people from African or Indian descent and poor people. So what has been done in the last years? First of all, several federal universities have been created. Around 20 federal new universities have been created in the last 12 years, as well as more than 100 new campuses of the, the same federal universities. And we were able at the same time to provide access to the university for poor people. This means several measures were taken. One of them is to ensure they have a sort of quota. This is our brand of affirmative action. It means that uh, uh, in federal universities, half of the students should enter uh, that come from public school in Brazil. Uh, from public middle schools. In Brazil, usually, basic education, is, when it's provided by the state, is not good. When it's, uh, it's private, it's better, usually. Uh, but in the universities, it's the contrary. Uh, universities, when, which are private, are not so good as the public ones. So, one point that's very uh, cruel, so socially speaking, is that People who have money uh, will go to universities that are free because public education in Brazil is free. They pay nothing for it. While people who come from poorer backgrounds and have studied at public schools during their basic education years will go to higher education uh, institutions that are paid and that are not so good. This is one of the points, one of the problems we have. So in order to foster social inclusion in the universities, we had to give them, first of all, quotas. Half of the students that enter the universities shall come from public schools. This is a law that will have to be fully uh, uh, obeyed in the next few years. Uh, a time was given to every university, every federal university, in order to make its own a way to, to get this result. But most of them have already uh, reserved half of their place for those students. Second point, inside this 50% of students that come from public schools, there are ethnical quotes uh, benefiting most of all uh, people from African and from Indian descent. They are people that are ex excluded in the country. Quite often they do not have the same opportunities as people who are white and come from richer backgrounds. So our quota systems include two main questions. Uh, from one side, people who come from public school. On the other side, people who come from an ethnical background. The other half of the uh, places in the university is free for all. I mean, uh, people can uh, uh, enter them, can get their places without quotas and uh, so people fro who come from richer backgrounds uh, still they have their place in the university. At the same time, as I have told you, we more, more or less doubled the, name of the number of the places in the universities. So for people who are neither poor nor uh, from uh, ethnic minorities, uh, they still they have the same number of places to enter the university as they had 10 years ago. They lost nothing. What, what the government tried to do was to create new places so that the, the students that were uh, historically discriminated against could enter their place without taking the other people's places. This was, uh, has been and is still is uh, one of the main uh, public policies. Another policy is to ensure them with food and shelter. Without food and shelter, for many of them, it would be difficult to follow their studies. It was considered that it was not enough, enough to, to give them place, but we should also provide them with the material means 
to study during three, four, five years. We must add that uh, several studies that have been made showed that the performance of the quota students is not inferior to the performance of the other students. I mean, they don't have the same grades, they don't get the same grades when they apply to enter the university. They, uh, they had a, a poorer education than, the, than richer people, so uh, they need the quotas. But uh, several studies have showed that in one year or a couple of years at most, most of them will have the same level of uh, uh, quality in their studies than people that came from better schools than them. Because to get there, they have, must to sh they, they have shown a lot of stamina. They have, been, they have shown them that they are very able to face challenges. Uh, and so it's, uh, with we, have, we consider that the results of these students in the university are good and that academic quality is not uh, jeopardized by their presence. I should add another point. I told you about the expansion of federal universities. A lot of new universities have been created, a lot of places and so on. But I should add that particular care has been given to their quality. We had in Brazil a lot of doctors without job. We have a good system of uh, PhD training in Brazil. Historically, we say that we can boast of only one level of uh, education in Brazil. This level is graduate studies. It uh, has been consistently evaluated by CAPES. CAPES is uh, an agency that belongs to the Ministry of Education and it, that has historically been uh, concerned with this evaluation and support of graduation, graduate studies in the whole country. CAPES job has been crucial in order to ensure uh, that quality and quantity in the training of doctors and master degree holders are good. So we had 10 years ago some thousands of PhDs that uh, had gotten their, their, their degree but were not able to find uh, jobs. At the same time, we had a lot of uh, people who wanted to enter the higher education and they had no school, no, no inst institution to apply to. The creation of many campuses and of two, two uh, 20 uh, new federal universities was able to give places to the students, as I told you before, but also jobs to the doctors that were jobless. So most of our new federal universities have as their faculty mem members majority of uh, uh, the PhD degree holders, which helps a lot to, to ensure they, 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 the students will get a good quality in their education. At the same time, when you have a PhD degree holder, you know he's not only a teacher. He's, he or she is not only a faculty member. He or she is a researcher. So in the new universities, particular attention has been taken to ensure that at least the best among the PhD degree holders can have some room for their research. This means a lot of new uh, master degree and sometimes doctoral programs have been created uh, all along Brazil. This is what we, we are doing. It's a, a big endeavor. When President Lula was inaugurated in 2003, we had 12.2% uh, of net enrollment rate in the higher educational system. Now I will deal with the net enrollment rate in the higher education. By this, this data, we mean people from 18 to 24 years old that are enrolled at higher education. We consider this, uh, these people to be people who are studying at the right age. They should be and they are at uh, a higher education institution. But I must add that we will consider not only those who are enrolled, but also those who already get their got their degree. I explain it. Many people from uh, get their degree at 22, 23, 24 years old. It's uh, unfair 
to consider they are not at a, a higher education institution because they have already been and they, they got their degree. So when we discuss net enrollment rate, we always consider both people who are presently studying at a higher education institution and people who have already finished their studies getting their degree, the people who have achieved their studies at that level. So if you take the data for the beginning of President Lula's government, it was 12.2% it was of uh, those people. I mean, only one, one for every eight young people from that age was enrolled or had concluded his or her studies at a university or uh, another higher education institution. Now we have a little more than 20%. We have 20.2%, which means one uh, for every five Brazilians uh, have finished or are presently studying uh, at a higher education institution. It's a good advance. We are proud of this. But of course, we should uh, raise the number. We should get uh, enter the the 30% uh, band, and then in, the, in other years uh, continue to raise it in order to be at the same level as developed countries. This fact, these numbers I told you, show we are following the right path. We are giving a lot of more people uh, access to the universities. We are worried about their permanence, so we have these social programs that give them food and shelter, for instance. We give them uh, faculty members that uh, ha are, most of them, uh, most of the new teachers, the new faculty members, uh, PhD hold, degree holders. And last, we are trying to do our best in order to raise the number. Before finishing, I should tell you we have to take in the old technical schools that belong to, to the federal system that have been created since 1909 by former President Nilo Pesanha. We have raised their number, but we also have given them uh, a, a branch of higher education. So the Federal Institute from, for Science and Technology are able to train people for that are 15 to 17 years old, but also people older than them with a higher education quality for these older. And uh, this is important for us because we want to raise the number of people with formation, with training in STEM, in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We consider that uh, we also have to change a little the landscape of what's provided for people in higher education in Brazil. We should consider that several uh, professions have uh, very strict regulations, such as engineering, medicine, law. Not everybody can practice law. Uh, it's necessary to have a degree. It's necessary to go to the bar, to be approved by the order of the uh, lawyers of Brazil, which is uh, our name for the bar, uh, for the bar examinations. But we have other professions that do not have the same requirements. So we have to devise new, different types of higher education for different requirements and different publics. Uh, very likely, we will uh, be very strict in the education for professional training that is uh, ruled by specific laws that establish exactly what people should do in their jobs. I mean, uh, for a, a, a doctor, a medical doctor, you must have a training that's very specific, but for other areas, we should maybe change what the is being do doing. New uh, creations, the interdisciplinary bachelorships are very interesting. But I saw that uh, Professor Naumar de Almeida, the former uh, provost of the University of Bahia, the Federal University of Bahia, is also at the seminar. I think he has, uh, he is able to explain to you what he has been doing, which is very interesting. So social inclusion and academic quality that was my subject can be supplemented by several other interventions. I am um, sad not to be able to discuss with you, to answer questions from you, to answer, uh, to give you more explanations. But anyway, 
I hope to, to, to have been of some help to you. And uh, once again, I want to convey to you the best wish of a good Congress, a Congress that can be beneficial for everybody. Thank you very much. Have a good day.